UFC Fight Island 3 was a phenomenal card. What is the most fights, 15 fights on that, the most since like UFC 2. And it did not disappoint in, for now, what seems to be the send-off show. Um, no more Fight Island for the time being. Going back to the Vegas, going back to the Apex Center. But Fight Island as a whole was a phenomenal time. And Blake, I know you and me both enjoyed the hell out of this last month of fighting. Yeah, it's. I mean, we've kind of been saying it pretty much every time we meet. It's like a, the best time to be a UFC fan right now. You got fights every weekend, it seems like, sometimes even in the middle of the week. Right. And you got, you know, just a ton of new fi- new faces and you got a ton of old faces and legends that are that are still scrapping, uh, not to mention new locations and new arenas that, you know, we've never been ex- exposed to. And I'm sure <clears throat> the fighters have never been exposed to stuff like this either. So mm-hmm. it's really it's really new and refreshing time to be uh, in, into the UFC. It is. But with this last show, UFC Fight Island 3, of course, we had – a really, really technical masterpiece, really, between Darren Till and Robert Whitaker. But we'll get to that a little later. Let's start things off with the first fight of the card, which was actually really good. It was Nathaniel Wood taking on John Castaneda. Um, and Wood, Castaneda didn't look bad, but Wood was definitely the better fighter in this one. Yeah, I think Nathaniel Wood was one of four, I think, cage warrior champions ex cage warrior champions that were featured on this card mm-hmm. uh, i know for sure nicholas dalby was another one of them um nathaniel wood came out the gate and looked really impressive he looked long uh i saw his inch was only 69 it was listed at 69 inches nice. but he just he looked really long in there uh for a guy that i, I believe is only five six five foot seven uh with a 69 inch reach he strikes his striking is really smooth he he uses uh, his range really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, kept Josh Cost- John Costaneda on the outside, and I mean just pieced him up really. The first round was very I thought it was very even for the first round, and then it it just seemed like Wood just started pulling away. He was just clipping him at the end of his you know at the end of his strikes. Just looked really just smooth out there. I'd say. Yeah, uh, he he's one of the few kids. There's a lot of kids warriors between the last couple cards and this one. There is huge representation from that uh, from that company, and it's kind of cool, especially seeing all these guys like former champions of different companies built to make a lot of. There's a lot of debuts that have been going, and a lot of these debuts have been surprising. I mean, John Castaneda though, he although he didn't get the win, he looks like he can belong in the UFC, and it'd be interesting to where he goes in his next fight. Uh, but I could see him kind of not being those one and done, two and done guys. He could. He could make a, a living in the UFC. Just depends on where he takes his career from here. Still not the biggest fan of his uh, nickname, Sexy Mexi. It's kind of a little weird, but you know. Yeah, hey, uh, if we want to talk about weird. He's a tough guy. You know, touchy feely. You can't beat that one. Touchy feely is way better, though. Hey, touchy that's that's not though. bad at all. Yeah. Um, the that's next... a play on words. That's yeah. I love it. I love a good pun. The next one I wanted to get into, though, it was between Betch Correa and, and Penny um, Kanzad. Betch, just real quick, um, after the first round, Betch Correa stopping 10 seconds early and almost paying with a knockout. You, yeah. You can't make she that got mistake. Clipped. <laughs> Dude, bad. that's, yeah, that, that had to have been on Sports Center, not top 10. It's going to be, for sure. But, uh, like, I mean, how do you turn away and how do you have a free shot on someone and you still can't even knock them down? That's, yeah, it's it kind of, uh, I mean, rough. At least she somewhat saw it coming, I'd say. Yeah. She just looked like she looked at the last second, you know, was kind of going for like maybe a fist bump or something and then saw it just, you know, coming like a freaking heat sinking missile at her. <laughs> well, she heard the, uh, the claps and then yeah. she just kind of nodded like the round was over. It was, that's just, it was you know, weird. You gotta I've never be, seen that before. You got to be mentally, you know, in tune in there. You can't, can't be taking any, any breaks in there mentally. And she just wasn't focused for those last 10 seconds, you know? Mm-hmm. But Penny, Almost paid for it. She made a uh, well, wasn't could you call it a statement victory, and kind of uh, kind of planting herself mm. in the bantamweight division, kind of making herself. I don't know a if it was known. necessarily a statement because if it was a statement, she would have got a finish of some sort, I would say. But she beat who she's supposed to beat, mm-hmm. so that's that's one thing she has going for her. It's just that's not going to get her a uh, top fighter. It's not going to get her a co-main or a main event slot anywhere anytime soon. Mm-hmm. It's not getting the buzz around her. You know, she just took Betch Korea to 
uh, decision, which to her credit, I mean, I think only one person has finished uh, Korea before, which might have been Holly Holm. I, mm. I could be wrong, though. I think it was Holm off of a head kick, though. So, I mean, she's she is a tough woman for sure. But Kianzad got pieced up a little bit mm-hmm. more than my for, you know, for my liking what uh, what I expected her to go out there and do. So, I mean, she, her freaking eye was swollen, dude. Yeah. So I would have liked to have seen a little bit cleaner of a fight, maybe even a finish from her in order mm-hmm. for that to have been a statement win. But like I said, she beat who she was supposed to beat. You can't really be mad at that. Exactly. Um, next fight, we have a great heavyweight foul, Tenor Bozer. Bozer is really making a name for himself over the last couple of months. There's, honestly, I said this on Twitter, and I believe that there's a very few amount of fighters that have had a better last couple of months than Tanner Bozer has. Three knockouts, two months. This one coming about a month um, a month off his last fight, but another big-time knockout. Quick feet, quick hands, but a lot of power behind that. He's almost, he's like around 220, 230, so he's not huge for a heavyweight, but he doesn't need that extra weight when he has this much speed and this much power behind his hands. Yeah, he's, he's going to start getting some higher-level guys now after this. He's going to get some uh, more attention. They're probably going to start throwing some bigger guys at him, maybe some guys with wrestling pedigree. So he's going to have to sharpen those tools and get ready for, you know, to perform and display a more all around game. I would mm-hmm. think next time, because he's getting away with some really good knockouts here. And uh, that's, that's great for him, but I'm sure his opponents are taking notice and they're going to try and figure out his tendencies and see if they can shut them down. Mm-hmm. Do you think we might be able to see a top 15 opponent for him next? Or is that a little, little too soon? I mean, the heavyweight division isn't really that deep in my opinion. So it, when you're getting knockouts like Tanner Bozer is, you're getting, you know, a lot of, uh, you get a lot of notice, mm-hmm. you know, people are going to, people are going to want to see you fight because I mean, heavyweights, you know, it's basically like watching trees get cut. You, you just right. waiting for someone to yell timber and, and go down. So I think that he could he could be on the fast track pretty soon. I think give him one more like a Maurice Green type guy, that because there's some heat behind that. Mm-hmm. I don't, is I don't even know if Maurice Green's ranked or not. He but, is not ranked. Okay, well then yeah, I think put them up together, and then the winner of that goes and fights the you know the number fifteen, number fourteen guy. Mm-hmm. That that could be rock solid. We've had um, Cyril Gain and Fabrizio Verdum fifteen and fourteen respectively. Who knows? I would not mind seeing Tanner put up there. Right now, it looks like he has a talent, at least on the stand-up. We haven't seen him really push his limits so yet. Yeah. So I would like to see him against a tougher opponent. But also, if we want to take a little more time, if he wants to take a little more time, one more kind of unranked fight first until he breaks into the top 15 to really kind of hone in his skill, I wouldn't be opposed to that, and I wouldn't blame him. All right, so... Maybe a little controversial of a fight with um, Tom Aspinall and Jake um, Collier. What did you think about this one? Uh, I mean, I thought it was just a knockout, I guess. The guy didn't, you know, it didn't look like the cleanest of punches. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, sometimes sometimes certain punches just get an area that you just can't recover from. And yeah. it looked like it he might have got him on the eye somewhere it, that's at least what he was grabbing to uh and if your eye is compromised like that i don't blame a guy for not wanting to go in there and fight like michael bisbing basically <laughs> yeah um, what did you I'm think not, though i i thought it was fine it looked sometimes it's just those is one of those cases where it's like one of them dirty knockouts you know um not this dude laying some clean combo in them but he's just Kind of just roughing it out almost. Um, he had a hurt opponent, and he just went and finished it. Um, Jake, it, it looked like the eye was a little too much. He was just kind of out of it at that point. Um, but I thought it was a good performance by Aspinall as a whole. You got there. Um, pretty good performance. First round knockouts are always great on the resume. And so good for him. He's might be able to um, start getting closer to that top 15 maybe um, in, a, in a couple fights or so. Who yeah, knows? there's a lot of heavyweights on this card. We huh? might be able to see Bozer and Aspinall sometime soon, depending on how uh, their next fights go. Yeah, possibly. They're both kind of newcomers to the UFC mm-hmm. a little bit, so they they could be well on their way to facing each other if they keep stacking up these Ws. Mm-hmm. And now one of the guys you mentioned was a former Cage Warrior champion. You said Nicholas Dalby. And mm-hmm. he's better in Cage Warriors, I think, uh, given his performance against Jensi Ronson. 
Yeah, he just didn't look like he had it last night. Uh, he I mean, he got kind of dominated from the start. Really, it, there wasn't really a, a chance for him in that fight. I don't I don't think he didn't look any dangerous on the feet. Mm-hmm. Didn't really have an answer for uh, on the ground. So props to Ronson. He went in there, and I think it was Ronson's like second stint in the UFC too, right? I think he mm-hmm. used to fight at lightweight. Yeah. Uh, so good for him. He got out. He went out there, got the W. I'm I'm sure he was probably the underdog or, you know, close to it. So. Mm-hmm. It's hard to beat, like, round one knockouts, round one submissions. Really hard to beat performances like that. And he, Dalby got caught, and Jesse made him pay. It's really as simple as that. They both look great, though. Uh, or at least um, Jesse looked great on the ground. We'll see where the UFC goes with Dalby. Very curious if he's going to get a chance or two left. It pro- I think he does just because, you know, former champion in a different promotion, there's a little bit of... But it is a second shot. Stuff though, that UFC. comes with that. It's 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 very difficult. What do you think? Like if this if this was his first shot in the mm-hmm. UFC, then I'd say yeah, he probably gets another chance. But if this was his second shot in the UFC, you think he's he came done? back and he got submitted in the first round really easily. Mm-hmm. So I mean, maybe they give him one more chance. But I don't know. After that performance, mm-hmm. yeah, you'd have to look at his contract. If the UFC isn't paying him too much, then yeah, they they might keep him just in case he's, but mm-hmm. he didn't look like a top level competitor right there. Yeah. He might be able to use for filler on the early prelim or prelim sometime, but it's hard to see him really making a bigger name for himself. than you've seen. Especially probably. a welterweight, man. That's a bunch of sharks in the welterweight division right now. Right. I don't see him getting cracking the top 15, even no. like the way that he performed last no. night. Definitely. Not. So, um, but welterweights are really good division. Lightweight. Crazy are- that he fought to uh, a draw with Darren Till though back in the day. I think we right. mentioned that on our last episode. Mm-hmm. But you would not guess wild. that from this card. <laughs> you would. Yeah, I, not- I don't know. So um, did Dalby mm-hmm. drop or has Till just gone that much better? I would go with the latter. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I also think it's the fact that Darren Till pulls people into weird fights, you know, mm. just like Robert said last night, yeah. we'll get to it later, but he said, this is the, that was the most stressful fight in my career. Mm-hmm. And it, it looked like that. Um, but this last fight that we had to uh, cap off the prelims was controversial in his finish. Um, we'll give our thoughts on about that in the moment, especially if you're Dan Hardy. Uh, we all know that he gave everyone his thoughts, um, but Francisco Trinaldo, Jai Herbert, arguably fight of the night with this one. Um, the Francisco Trinaldo ultimately got the, the TKO late in the third, but um, Jai Herbert, he looked great in defeat in making his UFC debut, correct? Um, <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah he got but, knocked out. He got knocked out bad. But Trinaldo, there was, there was that some, punch was crazy. It was a really good punch, but there were moments where Jai had Trinaldo on the ropes too. It oh was, yeah, sure. It was really good back and forth. It um, was back and forth. What'd you like about this one? I love the knockout. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm a simple man. I see a knockout, I get excited. Uh, I just, I really, really like that knockout. Mm-hmm. Um, the stoppage, I thought was a little, you know, you, you probably could have just ended it on that punch. I think. Mm-hmm. Just the way that he fell down, I felt like, okay, that's that's probably enough. Especially since it was in the third round, you know, like yeah. they'd already been pretty much through a war at that point. Dude, so it's I don't know if Herb Dean deserves the criticism that he got from this one, or at least I could say he do, he does deserve a little criticism for this. It was weird to see him let it go, but um, there were just one too many punches on the ground. I would have liked to see him call it once um they got that last knockdown. But he was still conscious, and he still has his hands up. So you can make the argument, but ultimately the fight should have been stopped. But at the same time, it wasn't as egregious as those Twitter warriors made out to, to seem. And I could say that Dan Hardy may have overreacted a little bit as well. I, I think it was just kind of like one of those heat of the moment type deals mm-hmm. where everyone knew that fight was over. Yeah. But we're not in that cage, and we're not seeing up close like their expressions. And- exactly you know, hearing their breathing and, and, and everything like that. And, you know, we're just not professional referees either. We're mm-hmm. not, we don't have the experience that Herb Dean and Goddard and all those guys in there have. So I'll, you know, I'll let them do their job, but I mean, I think everyone can agree that, you know, that, that fight probably should have been stopped sooner. And there was probably. maybe one or two other fights on this card that Herb Dean was refereeing mm-hmm. as well. That sh- the same thing. He, he didn't just have let, a great he night. let a few, he let, yeah, he didn't have a good night last night. And that's, as a referee, like, 
that's just not really acceptable. No. You're you're in there and you're looking out for the fighters' well beings, and Dan Hardy being an ex fighter, you know he's going to be super emotional on that side and yeah. try and stick up for you know who he feels is. I understand why his guys, I guess. Yeah, I understand why that why Dan did that, and I understand why Herb didn't call it immediately. I could see both sides, um, but I think we could all agree the fight was over. But besides that, though, um, Jai could still. He could definitely make in the UFC after a scrap like that. Oh yeah, he's going. You to- do you put on performances like that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure he's going to get a nice little locker room bonus right. from the UFC for. I'm, I'm sure Dana had the good time on the watching like that, that fight, and if Dana enjoys oh, yeah. the fight, that's really all that matters. Uh, sometimes, you know, doesn't matter about it's, the win or loss. If, if you got to remember, it's an Dana, entertainment too. Right? It's entertainment. If you could entertain Dana, you're doing something right. Doesn't matter about the result. Unless it's just some crazy Ben Askren like knockout where it could be entertaining to Dana, but also it's just a bad overall for for the guy on the, the wrong end of it. Man, moving to the, the main card though, Chimaev. He has just gone around smashing people. He took this fight on like about a week notice after his most recent one on the UFC Fight Island um, 2. And he just wanted to go smash people and. Smashing people is what he did, and he destroyed Reese McKee. It was... He had two fights within 10 days. <laughs> Come on. And he won both of them by a finish He's... in the first round. I'm pretty sure. Did he get yeah. this? Did he get it in the yeah. first round first, first, first fight, or was it second first, round? This dude has hardly been touched in two fights in 10 days, and he's just gone destroying people. And he's How saying he that he, he doesn't mind going. He said he, he doesn't mind going back welterweight, middleweight. And he said, I think he even said something about uh, light heavyweight too. So he's <laughs> he just wants to fight. He just wants to fight. And this yeah. guy, I'm, I, I'm becoming a huge fan of his. He <laughs> The thing is, is he his style, I feel like is like if Kamaru Usman finishes people. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm. he he's like a Habib and Kamaru on steroids that finishes people. That's actually a really good description. That I've seen. I'd like to see him freaking go against Usman. I think he would dominate Usman right now. Right now, he's not literally already. Range. I'm already ready for him, dude, to go and fight Usman. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. ready. I'm sold. What other guy has made this much of a statement within ten days? I was talking about. I'm telling you, how, no how one Tanner in that top Bozer, fifteen is going to want to fight him. No, Tanner Bozer has had uh, very few people have had better two months than him. What people? No one has had a better two weeks, arguably. Than Shemayev has had because he's just gone from pre- unknown, pre- essentially, to one of these. I, I'll call him one of the scariest fighters in the welterweight division right now. He got he got the right. bonus right his uh, last ten days. Uh, the not not last night but the night uh, the he first got, fight. Yeah, he got, he got bonus, the right? bonus right there. Did he get a bonus last night? I wonder. Did, um, we, did that get released yet? I don't see a, um nothing released yet. Uh, there's nothing on the UFC website. Man, because so think about official. that. He could be he could have made a hundred k just off of bonuses in the last. 10 days <laughs> the dude is that's on, crazy there is no one with a more sharper increase in trajectory than Shemayev has right now poor reese he just got slaughtered in, in this one he he didn't look good yeah he didn't have a he didn't have a chance, no chance. i mean but all, I, I, and I think i heard that guy used to fight at uh lightweight so mm. he was he was coming up so all maybe you should stick with lightweight he looked a little too uh yeah. Chimaev like too strong. is a name to watch out for, and we hell. I was joking with Blake. Is I can't wait to see him August first. Can't wait to see him on UFC 252. Can't wait to see him. Man, something <laughs> either just, that or August fifteenth. He, he's he can, looks like he can fight almost every day. I swear he's going to be the first fighter with like ten fights in a year. Guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not have him fight twice a month? Screw it, dude. If he's accepting, I'll watch. He's unbelievable. Um, the next fight we had. It was another little, um, not super, not as lopsided as the previous one, but it was a little lopsided. Pierce of Adetan, he looked fine in moments, but Alex Oliveira, Cowboy, really had this fight controlled for almost all 15 minutes that, that it lasted for. Yeah, he showed his, he showed that he's a veteran in this sport and knows how to get it done. Mm-hmm. I mean, he kind of took the guy to school, really. Mm-hmm. He had a couple, he had what, a low blow, um, Incidental eye poke, uh, kind of slowed things down a bit. Credit to Peter for not really taking much time at all after those. He just kind of got back right into things. So uh, respect to him. But Olivier, that just kind of happens though. I feel like with yeah. with fighting styles like Oliveira's, those kind of wild, lanky, 
you know, just erratic fighting styles that are he just trying to hit purpose. you any way he can. Yeah, he's he's no Daniel Cormier. He's no John Jones. Alex doesn't do it on purpose, but he definitely looked like a veteran. He definitely looked like the more experienced fighter. And I was surprised that he did he not break good. His, I'm surprised he didn't break his toes over Peter's arm. <laughs> Straight up. It looked brutal. Some of those leg kicks were well, <laughs> that, that little bit of force in it. It looked almost like he broke Peter's arm at one point after Peter um, checked a high kick. And he's just his arm is just kind of holding there at his side. Did you you notice that, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looked a little suspect, but I mean, those can't credit feel to good. credit to Peter. He's he's a tough guy. Yeah, no, yeah. But those can't feel good. I'd rather take one off the arm than inside the dome. But right. Checking kicks still hurts a lot. <laughs> hey, Oliveira, Cowboy Oliveira looked really uh, in shape though. I'd say for this fight too. Hell, I'll say Cowboy still in his prime. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, a man that hasn't reached his prime though, but he's getting a lot better. He's already tied or has the record for most triangle submissions in light heavyweight division. Paul Craig is there's a lot. There's a few names on this card that are either skyrocketing up the car, um, up the rankings, or really making a name for themselves. And Paul Craig is one of those people. Yeah, I can't believe that he was taking those punches while submitting that guy. I mean, he just he doesn't give up when he when he has that triangle locked when he has whatever submission he's going for locked he will take whatever punishment in order to make you tap out which mm -hmm. i respect immensely mm -hmm. he has one hell of a chin has one hell of a ground game and his stand-up isn't half bad either but to get a submission no it's getting better it's it's definitely getting better but to get that submission two minutes seven seconds into the first round oh boy uh, you gotta feel bad for Anthony Gulov. He got caught and he tried to fight it. It's not like he gave up. He was, he was laying good shots on Paul. Well, he played with fire, you know. Yeah. He he tried to he was trying to stack his guard and trying to you know use his pressure wrestling. It looked like on him. And when you play with fire, sometimes you get burnt. So that's Craig's bread and butter is so, on the ground, you know, throwing up those triangles. Some of the scariest people in the UFC are always the ones that seem like they could submit you from anywhere and they're even better off their back than they are you know in mount. Yeah, that guy's tall and lanky, so it's really – he's like a little snake in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, not really little, but he's a huge snake, really. He he could do a lot of damage in, the, in that light heavyweight division. It's the light heavyweight division, like kind of like the heavyweight. The top five are really good. Um, the five, you know, six through ten, are, they're good. But then, you know, the, like the, the 11 through 15, there's – It's like a revolving door. Yeah, he could – he could break into that top 15 really quickly, probably in his next fight. So, um, now this next one wasn't as exciting. Uh, you see a lot of people call it a little bit of a snooze fest, um, at least in, in, for Carla's fighting style. I didn't have any qualms with it, uh, but what did you think of this one? With I didn't Carla think Spartan it was that Marino boring. Rodriguez? It, I mean, it, it had its moments where it was, you know, kind of – not the most exciting fight, obviously, just because Carla's kind of a pressure wrestler mm -hmm. and likes to work from the top. But I mean, both girls were, were, were fighting really well. I mean, they, they both busted each other up. Uh, Carla had a huge freaking uh, welt on her eye from that, those slicing elbows from uh, Marina. <clears throat> and I believe uh, Rodriguez, she got cut on her eye as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken from some of Carla's ground and pound. So it was a really even fight. I felt like Carla just did a better job of controlling Rodriguez, uh, using her wrestling, keeping her down. And Rodriguez just didn't really offer too much on the ground. Uh, for a Brazilian, I expected her to be a lot more dangerous with submissions, you know, and threatening Carla if she was using her wrestling. But I, I believe she's only a purple belt, so she's not super high level yet. So she has a little bit to work on, it looks like, in the ground game. But on the feet, Rodriguez, she is lanky, you know? I think she has a really good look for that division. But mm -hmm. Esparza is just such a tough night out for so many of these girls in there, and you just see it time and time again. She's a veteran. She knows what Former she's champion. good at. She and she knows – Yeah, she knows how to – she knows what are going to get her points and mm -hmm. she, and how she's going to get more points than that than her the person she's fighting. Mm -hmm. And that – just look at her record. It just goes to show you she's won a lot more fights than she's lost. Yes. Um, she has – Obviously, veteran, former former champion. It's hard to beat someone like that with that experience. But Marina Rodriguez definitely has a future in the strawweights. She 
looked pretty good for um, a lot of the fight. And so um, I would like to see her have another, you know, top 10 opponent and um, see what she can do against that. Yeah, definitely. She's just got to work on that ground game for sure. She's got to learn how to get up quicker or threaten with submissions mm -hmm. and work on that cardio. Yep. You know? She could be good though. Now let's talk about- That was about her first loss. So yeah. Still young. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, this, this th the next fight? I kind of had to feel it was supposed to be really good. supposed to be Gustafson in his return to the octagon in a little over a year. Moving up to the heavyweight division, taking on former champion, um, longtime veteran Fabrizio Verdum. And they had some beef going back. Apparently, Gustafson beat up on Verdum um, in, a couple, in a sparring session a few years back. But that did not look to be the case um, in, uh, in this fight last night. Yeah. And you know what? I actually saw a really interesting tweet last night. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who tweeted it out, mm -hmm. but uh, if you want to make money, bet on this guy, Verdum. Anytime, because he was an underdog going yeah. into the fight oh, last night. Like and it was actually pretty substantial. Underdog? It was more than 150 because more. the the tweet I saw last night is anytime that he is over like a plus 160 dog, mm -hmm. he's 5 and 0. Oh. Man. So yeah, he makes him. people money. <laughs> Anytime he's an under like over a plus one sixty underdog, bet on that guy. That's crazy. He's undefeated. That's crazy. But uh in terms of the fight though, it was kinda yeah, it was definitely disappointing to see Gus go out. Uh we didn't even really get to see too many exchanges on the feet. Uh he, really his back was taken almost instantly once they went to the ground and then he gave up that arm bar pretty much and it was that was all she wrote. So he didn't really have any answers for Verdum. And I mean, Verdum's a huge, you know, that's got to be a big difference. He's big. having a guy as big as Verdum getting on your back like that. It, the weight helps also it helps that he's one of the better, you know, BJJ practitioners in the UFC. Yeah. He's extremely well-rounded, you know, good. so he used to be a champion as well, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I want to see where Gustafson goes for this. I, yeah, I, I don't want him to just I retire. I don't want again. him to be done because I, this wasn't a good kind of example of him in heavyweight. He got caught on his back by one of the best um, BJJers in the game, and it's kind of we didn't really get to really see much of him. I would like to see him have another fight in in the heavyweight division. I believe he should. I'd like to see him back soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe just shake this one off. It was a quick loss. He didn't take much damage. It was just a quick grappling um, game, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, as long as that armbar didn't really. Well, do he, he tapped super crazy. crazy. He, he yeah. tapped really. He tapped as soon as um, Verdum locked it in, so he knew, and he escaped with pretty much minimal damage. Then I'm sure armbar is, is still going to hurt no matter how long it's held in. You'll for. be sore the next day. Yeah, but just just depending. I'd like to see him again. If Verdum, Verdum could uh, have almost. Does he get catch a second win in this division? Who knows? He's one of the he's one of the goats. I'd say he's he's definitely up there in the I'd say top three to top five uh, for heavyweight all time. Oh, for so, sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, beating a guy like Gus that just proves you know he, he's still he's still high level. He's still a guy that you can't take lightly, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he's still a specialist like and well-rounded at that at that fact like Gustafson didn't go in there and start piecing them up or anything like that so I mean super huge credit to Verdum going out there and and getting it done tons of credit and now in the co-main event of the evening we had the trilogy fight between Mauricio Shogun Hua and Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira and man I just gotta I had say very low expectations for this fight Oh, they, this fight exceeded all expectations, and I had a phenomenal time watching this. It was, it's just like watching their first and second fight. It was, well, I loved it. Like kind of almost the same sequence in the first round, especially. It I can't was, remember who said it. I think it was like Paul Felder or Felder, something. But yeah, uh, he was like, man, they should be putting on the Rocky theme song music while they're fighting right now. It's, I, dude, I love that idea. That would have been was sweet. So good. It was for how old these guys are. Super veteran. Uh, Shogun's been fighting since '07. And they're still putting on scraps like this. It was rough to see Nogueira. You could make an argument that he won that fight. Um, mm. It was kind. You can. You can. I don't think so. It. I agree. It's a little stretch. It's a little bit of a stretch. You. There are some people that tried. It was a very, very close fight. Yes, it was. And it. 
it was tough to see Nogueira, a legend like him, kind of go out on a loss. He did confirm um, in his post-fight interview that this is his last fight. Take that with a pinch of salt because we know UFC fighters. <laughs> it's hard to stay away like us. Man, to go 0-3 in the trilogy and to kind of have this last one um, go out on the loss, it's a little tough, but it's you can't really take away from that much from his career. Phenomenal career that Nogueira had. Yeah, I mean, they're both legends of the sport, so he lost, mm-hmm. whatever. Take the L, move on. Mm-hmm. And then Shogun now. Uh, second win for Fabrizio Verdum. Second win for Shogun Hua. <laughs> What's up with these? I don't, I don't know so much about that though. I mean, Shogun Shogun's still, you know, okay, maybe top fifteen, yeah. but I don't think he's ever going to be championship level again. Especially Probably like not. how slow they both looked last night. If he goes and mm-hmm. fights against a guy like Stipe or no, oh, he's you know, it's not good. But um, let's like talk imagine about... Nganu fighting that guy. That would be a slaughter. I think that's murder. I think you can classify that. That nah, shouldn't be legal. Nope, that's manslaughter. But uh, a good fight that we could see though is uh, got another guy that was on this card. Where they were actually talking about this fight already um, last night. Shogun Hua versus Paul Craig. Could be kind of, that could be a very good Yeah, matchup. I mean, I would not I would not be scared for Shogun's health in that fight. So, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> He's not going to get guys, Give him guys, you know, yeah. Have him be the gatekeeper for the top 15. Yeah, but, Blake, in any world, it, it, I mean, maybe 2020 because everything's happening this year, but in what kind of alternate dimension are we in where it's in 2020 and we could see a guy like Paul Craig taking on Shogun Hua? Who would have ever thought that this fight could even be a possibility? I mean, Mystic Mac, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> the only man. The only man that could ever think of that. And now it brings us to our main event of the evening. A highly anticipated fight, not only for the fight that the, the performance we're going to put on inside that cage, but also for the implications this is going to have on the middleweight division. We talked about this a little bit in our preview show for this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more now. It was a really high, highly, is a great pace, great technical fight between these two, with both of them catching each other, each of them dropping each other once. Um, Really close fight, but ultimately Whitaker got the decision, uh, 48-47, and I do agree with that. Blake, your thoughts on this fight? Yeah, I think they made the correct decision, like nailed it for once. Mm -hmm. You know, 48-47, I think unanimous decision is completely correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. 48-47. He just just did a little bit more than Till did in that fight Mm -hmm. to get to edge out the W. He mixed Mm -hmm. it up a little bit better with the takedowns. Uh, he fought through some early adversity, came back after he looked a little flat, and, that and first really put it on him. When he kind of came in with that left overhand and Till caught him with that left elbow flush on the chin. Yeah, it that was, was a super, super impressive. clean shot, but super impressive that Whitaker was able to recover that quickly. Yeah, and he didn't look great after it for a little bit, but then he mm-hmm. got back into the fight, ended the round decently well, came back the second thing. round, dropped him you know, dropped him with his own shot yeah. and then he followed him to the ground and got some really nice ground and pound too. Mm-hmm. So I thought that Robert had the, the better, uh, he had the better moments in the fight mm-hmm. out of the two of them. I mean, they, they both had really good moments, yes. but Robert just had a little bit more meaningful and uh, just pulled away. I feel like a little bit with how he was able to like, mm-hmm. like I said, use his takedowns, you get some ground and pound in. Mm-hmm you know, push him up against the fence, control the range, uh, using his feints really well. But I mean, yes. same thing with Darren Till too. Like we, like we said earlier, this was Robert set out, came out and said, this is the most stressful fight in my life. Like he, he knew if I you could see that you could see that while they were fighting, they were both it, a little hesitant. At some yeah. Times. And it still makes me a little nervous too. The way that, uh, Whitaker has that little bounce, you know, to him and then just charges in and leads with his head sometimes. Cause that's exactly how Adesanya took him out. Mm-hmm. And I thought that there was actually, there's a part of me that was like, dude, there's a good chance that Till could, could have a pretty similar knockout to the one that Adesanya got on him. Mm-hmm. But uh, Whitaker was able to stay away from that. And, and he really only got caught that one time with that elbow and was smart to it uh, since then. Mm-hmm. So I think 48, 47 unanimous decision was Perfect. just, brilliant yes finally they got it right everyone was freaking paying attention maybe they're drinking caffeine who knows good job (laughs) at least they finally pay attention at the last fight of the card 
Uh, I would argue that it was almost in the fifth round. Darren Till, I could, I, um, I would argue that Darren Till, if it wasn't for that last kind of the takedown from Robert, Robert uh, Whitaker in that last minute, I would say that Till won the round, especially, um, and he could have won the fight, but it was very close. But I agree with the decision. Darren Till, if only he, if he had like maybe two more minutes on the round after he landed that really clean elbow to the top of Whitaker's left ear that had a pretty big gash. He was ble he that cut open and it it bled quick. So if he had a little bit more time to work on that, I could have seen him take that round a little more. But the credit to Robert Whitaker for getting cut, but then going straight for that takedown, securing the round, securing the dub. Yeah, I was actually kind of. Different thinking, though, mm. uh, from most. I actually had Robert win in uh, the first – well, obviously, Till won the first round. And then I had Robert win the next three rounds in a row. So I had it 3-1 Robert Whitaker going okay. in the fifth already. And I so I kind of figured, like, Darren Till needed a 10-8 just to mm -hmm. get a draw. And so I still had Till winning. Even with that uh, Whitaker takedown at the end, I still had Till winning that fifth round. Mm. And so still had it 48-47 okay. on my I, books. I had um, Till take it the first. Whitaker had taken the next two. I had Darren Till barely winning the fourth. I had 2-2 two, two going to the fifth. And then um, for me, um, but of course, you, it's hard to, I could totally see like both sides of that. It was a really close fight, but ultimately the right fighter won. And now, are we going to see Whitaker taking on the winner of Arnstein and Paula Costa? Or are we going to see a guy that we mentioned and you argued for in our previous show, are we going to see the dark horse of the division, Jared Cannonier, get that title shot next. No, I don't think I don't think Cannonier can get the title shot next. I don't think anyone can get a title shot next. The next fight underneath Paulo Costa and Adesanya has to be decided. You know, uh, between Hermanson, Cannonier, and Whitaker. Mm. It's one of those three guys right there. So Whitaker against Cannonier for the number one for the number one contender spot. Yeah, because Cannonier's already taken out Hermanson, mm -hmm. so that kind of. MMA math kind of does its work there. That would be but, a phenomenal fight too. See, that's yeah, that'd be oh, a man. banger. Oh, I'd love man. to see Whitaker. I mean, that's just crazy that Whitaker has to fight all these crazies like that. That top of that middleweight Respect position is him. stacked. And Whitaker, Whitaker might be the, the biggest Reaper, badass man. ever, in my opinion, for the UFC. Just the just look at the people he's fought on his resume. He let alone he's fifty fought minutes. Everyone with the one of the most craziest human beings in history in Yoel Romero. Fifty Dude, Yoel minutes. Romero. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yoel Romero, <laughs> Stephen Thompson, Darren Till, Adesanya, uh, Jacare Souza. He's a beast, I mean, man. The, the list beast. just goes on and on with him. Yoel Romero twice. Him. And yeah, I love to, I love the the um, I guess honestly from both these guys we know Darren Till he's not shy to tell how he's actually feeling, but also Robert Robert Whitaker um, after his fight um, talking on the media saying that he was uh, that the the some like the next fight for a champion after a loss is super scary, um, and I can totally see why he looked great though, both these yeah. guys look phenomenal Darren Till. Should not drop in the rankings. He should stay put in number six, and his next fight should still be another top five opponent. Yeah, I mean, high level guys like this losses, unless you're just getting starched, they yeah. really don't hurt you that much. It just mm -hmm. if you still looked impressive in that fight, like Darren Till, still looked dangerous and impressive. So mm -hmm. he's just got to get in there and 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 fight another top guy, and then get some more momentum going. Exactly. I mean, even Adesanya was like sad face, you know, like I wanted to fight you, right. but. I, I and there's no way you can't count out that fight yet. We there's still a very good chance that we see that fight. Some some Till's one of those guys where he has you know the following, he has the the uh, you know uh, the charisma, mm -hmm. the ability on the yeah, microphone, person. stuff like that to bring the casual fans in. So he's always right. going to be at the top, you know, at the on the short list for mm -hmm. for title shots any I division he's in i saw the statement and it's a very great one um when this whole kind of shutdown thing happened we saw till really up his game and presence on twitter and he was extremely funny guy <laughs> from all the yeah. stuff he's doing the little face merges and stuff like that the really what uh, um that, that um dana till that was darren bisping <laughs> awful well now he has his face on aljamain sterling's head with aljo uses that for his twitter picture some creepy stuff but to, for, to see a guy bring this much light this much like i guess um entertainment into this whole like shutdown era and for him to 
and for him to, to have the last fight on Fire Island for the time being, I think that's poetic, and he definitely deserves to be the send-off man uh, for our experience and stint, at least the first one, on Yabu Dhabi, Fire Island, Yas Island, you know? Yes, sir. But now... We have UFC Vegas 5 coming up August 1st. Brunson versus Jabazian. We'll get that preview done um, for you guys, whether it be um, a standalone show or just uh, part of episode 46, which is coming up. Before we end off, I just wanted to let everyone know, um, merch. We got merch. If you haven't seen it yet, we have it. You go to our website, thefourthandlong.com. We are working with Teespring. Um, you can go to our website, click on apparel, be taken to the website, phenomenal shirts, tank tops, um, fanny packs, you get some decals, you can get some socks, all the great stuff, right, Blake? And I know, Blake, well, you and me both got some great stuff coming along the way, so I can't wait to be repping that merch on show. Yes, sir. Should be arriving here in the next couple, in like a Ooh. week or two, actually. Yeah, it's going to be a birthday. It might be a birthday present for my own birthday present, you know, shout out to August 2nd. Everyone follow, like, and subscribe for my birthday because, you know, please. And then we have a big interview that I want to plug coming up. Hopefully, we'll be releasing it maybe Friday of um, next of this week. Marcus Rios, uh, former UCLA standout, um, played with the Broncos, played most recently in the CFL, and he's trying to make his return. One of the most remarkable stories you'll ever hear. He is literally the only person in the world with the same story that he does when in terms of uh, coming to fighting disease and becoming – a football player again making back to the field so you guys are going to want to watch out for that but with all that being said my plug is over blake thank you very much ufc correspondent for breaking down um ufc fight island three and just having a great time on fight island as a whole yep it was a fun time fun month so it's over hopefully they come back sometime yeah and now we have phenomenal august to look forward to the most important heavyweight match of all time